Okay, I'm going to make a start now. Um, we may have um, a few more people joining us, but as this is a lunchtime webinar, I like to be prompt because I know people are busy and you probably only get a short time for your, for your lunch break. So welcome to today's uh, Wednesday webinar. Uh, these are webinars for NatSpec member organisations and the idea is that colleagues come together to talk about interesting things they're doing, exchange ideas, um, ask questions and we've got a really interesting uh, webinar today all about beekeeping. Um, my name's Yola Jacobson and I am the manager of NatSpec Transform CPD service. And um, before I hand over to our presenters for today, who will be talking about becoming a beekeeper, this is an amazing partnership between Camp Hill Wakefield College, Derwin College and Woodmore Foundation um, around using beekeeping as an employability pathway for learners with disabilities. Um, we have Raf Taylor from Camp Camp Hill Wakefield and Will Lyon from Derwin and Matthew Wood and Maria Johnson. They're all going to contribute towards the presentation. But before I hand over to them, I'd just like you to tell you a little bit about what Transform has got coming up in the next uh, term or so. So as most of you will probably know Transform is NatSpec's CPD service. It's for member organisations, it's for non-member organisations and we run a programme of online interactive CPD training. Um, you can see here the range of courses that we offer. I won't go through all of them, but we have models around RAPA training. We have a two part course on developing the PMLD curriculum. We have uh, a high needs funding system uh, course. And then you'll see right at the bottom there, we have our Wednesday webinars, which this is this one of the series of the webinars. All of the courses you can see on your screen are delivered online uh, in an interactive way. And I know some of them, are, some of you are recognised have been on some of those courses already. Uh, we do also offer these courses in-house, so we can deliver them to your staff team, to your college online. But we also have open courses that are open to for colleges from multiple um, sites to come and join us. As well as our training, we have a consultancy service and we launched earlier this year the new NatSpec coaching service where, um, and, and this is around matching staff, this is just the member for NatSpec members with experienced coaches and they provide a non-directive form of development which focuses on improving your, your performance at work. All of this information is on the uh, NAPSPEC website. Upcoming events we have. Um, next week, we have a few places left on our, our internal review of RAPA provision course. And then all of our courses for next term and for the summer term are available on the website. Uh, developing the PLMD curriculum for learners, that's a two session course, first session on the 12th, Introduction to RAPA on the 17th of January. And then we just launched the uh, Peer Exchange Week. So please have a look at the website. We launched it yesterday, 12 sessions over a period of four days. This is all online. Uh, it's a chance, it's free for NatSpec members only. It's a chance for you to get together with colleagues and uh, talk about various subjects. So we've got sessions that range from this one session for nurses. There's a session around assistive technology, the five top uh, assistive technology top tips. Uh, we've got a session around um, recording in recording progress. There's a wide range of, of sessions on available there, so I urge you to go onto the NatSpec website and have a look um, and sign yourself up. The idea of Peer Exchange Week is not to deliver training, but to, it's a bit like the webinars, it's for your peers and yourselves to talk about issues, uh, exchange ideas, um, and generally work together in a supportive manner. Um, 
and we provide a, we facilitate the sessions and we invite members from colleges to give a little bit of an input at the beginning of the session to kick it off and then hopefully we have a, a really interesting discussion so peer exchange week 23rd to the 26th of january book your place now um just a little bit of housekeeping before we before i hand over to raf and co so obviously please mute during the presentation to avoid any background noise this this is being recorded and it will be posted onto the natspec youtube channel once it's been edited um <clears throat> most of you have your cameras on it's really nice to see you but um you know i know sometimes uh, perhaps people are in places where it's not possible to do that um the way we're going to run it is um, we're going to run the, the presentation if you've got questions um put them in the chat box at the end or unmute to ask the questions or indeed put them in the chat box during the presentation i'll monitor the chat box um and i'm now going to hand over to raf who's going to start the presentation so he can share his uh he can share his presentation with you and i'll put myself on mute uh, before before we start has anyone got any questions before we before we kick off no all good great over to you then raf thank you uh, thank you Ola. just give me a nod let me know if you can hear me okay good um, thank you for joining us this afternoon, giving up some of your lunchtime, and also a big thank you to Yola and Natspec for um, offering to host us. Um, you've seen who's going to be on the presentation. I'm going to start off. Um, at some stage, I will hand over to Will, and then finally, you'll hear from Matt and Maria from the Woodmore Foundation. So we've been we've been developing for a couple of years now the Becoming a Beekeeper program um i liked to include the title joining the dots uh, which was a, the theme at the recent base conference a couple of weeks ago in leeds um, which was all about joining the dots between everybody involved in any kind of employability employment <clears throat> pathways so we're going to share with you about how you know our journey of joining those dots uh, between three organizations and particularly three organizations in very different parts of the country so myself, Campbell Wakefield, is based in Yorkshire. Uh, Matt is based down in Surrey, and Will at Derwin College is in Shropshire. So it's not like we could just, you know, catch up and have meetings together, or we just happen to be in the same part of the country. Um, and the Trailblazer, Trailblazer project was started um, by myself and, and Matt a couple of years ago, um, and it follows Byron's journey at Campbell Wakefield um, with the support of the Woodmore Foundation and then how Derwin College got involved um, with Will and his team. So the partnership timeline, we had the kind of setting up, which was myself and Matt conversations, and it was a very much a chance encounter via some, I think it was base training, a couple of messages, and it just turned out that our interests, our enthusiasm, and, and our kind of vision and values aligned um, around practical activities, employability, and then bespoke projects. So me and Matt got in, involved, conversations, um, Campbell Wakefield agreed that we could run it. In March 2021, Byron was selected as the first beekeeping scholar. Um, in April, we received three hives uh, in kit form, and it was our woodwork shop um, with myself that assembled them. So we already started broadening the enterprise um, to be just more, more than just the one scholar on the programme. At the start of the project, the bees arrived in May 2021, and they arrive in what's called nukes, um, and they are placed in the hives, and then the project started. Um, it was a fantastic day with Matt and his team from Woodmore traveling up from Surrey to Campbell Wakefield. Um, we had, I think it started off with rain, came sunny as we went through, but we got the bees in and set up. So then from May through till October, Byron was involved in learning beekeeping every week going down to the hives with a support staff from the college and our local beekeeping mentor um, who was a, a beekeeper um, we found locally who came in to support 
Um, and then how we expanded the partnership going beyond just Campo Wakefield. So firstly, myself and Byron were invited to co-present at the base conference in Brighton. Um, Matt was running a Woodmore focused workshop. Um, we traveled down and co-presented about the beekeeping element. And then in spring 2022, uh, we provided three nukes for Derwent College to start their becoming a beekeeper project. Again, that came by a, another chance encounter that myself and Will had done our teacher training probably nearly 20 years ago now together. Um, and I just popped on my Facebook, I think in May, June 21, that we were we had bees. And Will just dropped me a message and said, bees, how do I do that, Raph? And I just said, Will, meet Matt, a few emails to align together, and, and we went from there. So in some ways, it's a really, you know, it's very simple to join these dots between the right willing and enthusiastic partners. So I think also something that is very important and something I had to sell to the senior leadership team at Campo Wakefield, and also what you'll be interested in today is what's the impact on learning? Bees are wonderful. It's a fantastic activity. Um, it's exciting. There's an environmental impact. But as a college, your senior leaders will want to know what's in it for the students. Therefore, you know, what's in it for targets, for objectives and achievements. And this is something that is, is not just me that's developed this from the college. This has also come with Matt and his, his processes around beekeeping. So one thing that's important, both us and Derwent College are aligning our beekeeping pathways to accredited qualification. So for us, we are aligning it to an enterprise qualification. And for Will and Derwin and their beekeeping scholar, they're aligning it to the Duke of Edinburgh Award. So it does fit. There is a way to line it up with qualifications um, and get accredited learning. And that, I think, realistically, you, you could develop across a range of levels as well. So entry one right through up to level one, level two. Um, enterprise, there is a natural enterprise in beekeeping. There is honey to sell. There is kit to buy. Um, there are wax products that can, can expand. You could do tours for visitors and little bits of show and tell. So that's how you fit it into your enterprise. Um, there are cross-curricular opportunities. It isn't just land-based. For us, it's our students. They come from land-based pathway and going to beekeeping. However, as I mentioned before, the woodworker involved in firstly assembling the hives, but then also doing any repairs to uh, what are called the frames, which are the bits which sit inside the hives with the wax and the honey. Um, and they will do that on an annual basis. Um, other workshops can get involved in making uh, wax products. <clears throat> and any students that are involved in an enterprise, um, they can also get involved in the business and marketing side. And again, expanding on the marketing, um, Woodmore very kindly set us up with a Facebook page called Becoming a Beekeeper. Um, and the students, should they want to, could have access to that. They can be involved in putting posts up um, and broadening across the whole college social media as well. Um, the big sell really is, is the transfer of skills. And you will see later on at the end of the presentation, um, Byron's Me Movie. And also, I hope that following this, if you take away, there's, there's a QR code on the last slide. And that goes to the Becoming a Beekeeper website, uh, Facebook page, sorry. And there you can see quite a few videos going back in time of both Byron and our current beekeeper. And as it says, these are students with no prior beekeeping knowledge. They've never been had anything to do with bees. Uh, and they've gone down there and, and learned everything that is needed around bees and for bees, which really is, is a very bespoke approach model and, and kind of project. Um, and I think the real key for me has been that if our students can go down and learn these skills to quite a high standard, then your next step is they can transfer skills into employment. They've demonstrated that they may be on a horticulture or a farming pathway or even a craft pathway, They've gone into beekeeping completely new uh, and they've picked up those skills. Um, they can do it into another, you know, they could go from horticulture to beekeeping and then work in a cafe. 
the transferable skills and the employability skills are, are really evident. Um, and a little bit of kind of the skill that we look for, employability skill, and then what kind of evidence you can pull from it. And this list is not exhaustive. Um, it's also, you know, bring some lightness into it. We don't want, you know, kind of heavy evidence. So there's a lot about being stunned because that's the first question that people ask. Oh, won't well, I get stung? I'm scared of bees. They're going to sting me. And actually, when our when Byron had his first visit to beehives before we even got them, um, our neighbours have got bees, and he was invited over, and he got stung on that very first visit, and that turned out to be one of the best things that happened because it proved that he didn't overreact, he didn't get upset, he calmly said, "Raph, I've been stung. Can you help me?" We stepped away from the hives, we dealt with the sting. And he said, yeah, I still want to go back to the hives. So he had that litmus test on the very first day. And that showed that, you know, he's got resilience. Um, and then that leads into the problem solving. How do you avoid getting stung? It turned out I'd given him the wrong type of gloves. So we solved that problem. Um, and perseverance, continuing after getting stung. So there's a lot around getting stung, the potential of getting stung, how to avoid it. And also, as Matt will always say, it's okay to get stung, it's going to happen. So there's skills there, there's evidence. Um, these are like, you know, take away, have a look at the recording and, and the presentation later on, um, but they're not exhaustive. They, they all go beyond just that evidence. There's a lot more evidence for each skill. So Byron did his year beekeeping, um, learned the skills, persevered, was resilient, got stung a couple of times, his support got stung, I got stung, and, and we're all still here and just as enthusiastic to do it. So last June, um, we knew that Byron was coming to the end of his time at Camper Wakefield and was going to move on. So we spent a bit of time finding another scholar, another student who wanted to learn beekeeping. Um, and she's pictured there, and that's Lily. So Byron became the guide. So he'd learned the skills. Now he was transferring that into how can he introduce another person and show them. And his ability and skill in guiding is, is, in, is brilliant because if you look at the Becoming a Beekeeper Facebook page later on, you will see in Lily's videos the skills that she has acquired between June and now. And that also takes into account that she wasn't able to come in over the summer holidays. So there was a six week gap um, between Byron guiding her and then the first video when I went down with her. So it was actually a two month gap and the skills acquisition that she showed and the recall and remembering information and, and technical details is, is amazing. So that's our Byron with his honey. Um, he's now moved on from Camp Hill Wakefield. He, prior to Camp Hill Wakefield, he had a part time job uh, with a well known fast food employer they put him on furlough they weren't sure whether he was going to return to his job after furlough as, as was the case with many businesses um, through the beekeeping project we kept them in the loop we shared videos uh, they decided they would welcome him back in um, for his I mean, just those I think it's four hours a week one shift a week um, but as a result of completing his his pathway they are considering what well, they will look at offering him additional days um, they've seen the difference in him in work because of all these additional employability skills he's picked up and learned. So I'm just going to um, hand over to Will from Derwin now, um, because in May 22, Matt came up to me, collected three nukes from us and delivered them to Derwin. And that was how they started their becoming a beekeeper journey. Um, so I'd like to hand over to Will, please. Hi, thanks, Raf. Yeah, um, everyone can hear me OK. Yeah, good stuff. Um, yeah, so as Raf said, in May uh, of this year, uh, the three nukes of bees arrived at Durham College um, from Camp Hill with Matt in the back of his car. Um, they were su uh, successfully installed in the three hives um, uh, provided by Woodmore. Um, and then that's where our journey began. Um, we initially enrolled a student called Sophie on the Becoming a Beekeeper programme. Um, and Sophie successfully graduated from Durham in July, so we needed someone else. 
Um, so in September, we enrolled another student called Sophie on the programme. You don't have to be called Sophie um, through, you know, that they, you can have different names. Um, and Sophie, um, number two, has, has taken this, uh, taken the, the project on, um, taken it in a stride and is, and is you know, flying with it. Um, so we completed our honey harvest soon after that. Um, and we bottled 48 jars of delicious and very, very local honey. Um, these have already sold out. In fact, it took about two weeks to fully sell out once the word was out around college. Um, they disappeared from the shelves very, very quickly. Um, and then from the wax um, collected from the extraction of the honey, Sophie and I also created um, pure beeswax blocks, um, as well as a gardener's hand salve containing uh, Welsh rapeseed oil and shea butter, and of course the Derwin beeswax, um, which I use on my hands in between uh, me sorting Christmas trees for customers and, and potting up plants or whatever I do on a daily basis. Um, so these products will be marketed in our garden centre shop on main campus very soon. Um, the rapid sellout of the honey um, got, got us thinking. So we created um, a pre-order form that is on the um, on the desk in the garden centre. Um, so this is where um, anyone can come in and, and see that we provide this local honey and these beeswax products um, and can put orders in. Um, and in fact, we already have some orders to fulfil in 2023. So fingers crossed for that season. Um, and just a bit on the, the, the Becoming a Beekeeper programme as a whole, it's been a great experience for all involved, myself included. Um, it's just extremely refreshing to be able to develop employability skills through um, the vehicle um, like beekeeping. It's just, it's just very different um, and it's a great way to explore and improve the, um, the skills uh, needed. Um, and, it's, and it's an exciting way to, to deal with all these skills and it doesn't feel like traditional education, um, which, is, which is a bonus for some of our students. Um, so Sophie, uh, as Raf mentioned before, Sophie will be using the experience, evidence and skills gained from the beekeeping programme um, for her Silver Duke of Edinburgh Award, which she's currently working towards. So um, yeah, it's been successful in, in all accounts um, and um, it's just great fun to be part of it. Back to you, Raf. Thanks, Will. Um, yeah, it was brilliant to, you know, to partner with, with another college. And actually, this is the bit where, you know, why we wanted to do this presentation to NatSpec, because this is where any, any other specialist colleges could get involved. We are in a position potentially by spring, um, and I might be speaking kind of on behalf of Will on this, but there is always the, there's the opportunity if there are interested colleges, Matt will provide the, the Woodmore element and support, which you're going to hear about next, um, but either Campill and or Derwin College could do the same process as we did last um, summer, which is to split our hives and sell on nukes. And then, you know, the scope, two colleges can become three, could become four. And then in a year's time after that, there's the potential further expansion. The other alternative is that the college can decide, well, actually we'll split our new our hives and we'll go from three hives to six hives because we want to build up the enterprise of selling the honey and the wax products. So there's, the partnerships really have been very fluid. Um, chance encounters, but without the chance encounters, I think we would have still found other means, mechanisms and, and partners who wanted to join up. So now I'm going to uh, hand over to Matt from Woodmore and he's going to talk you through the programme and he's going to keep nudging me about um, slides. So over <laughs> to you, Matt. Thanks very much. Thanks, Will and Matt. Can everyone hear me? Excellent. Right. In, in true Matt Hancock slide. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, OK, so, yes, I'm Matt and, and I created back in 2020 um, the Woodmore Foundation uh, mid pandemic. And um, and I created it because as an employer of over 20 years, um, I had a little bit of an out of body experience and I, I realized quite quickly that actually what we do back in you know my, my full-time job um uh, we is we employ the character and we teach the skills we have done for well nearly 30 years and, and i've been at the firm for 24 years so it, it inspired me that notion that thought process inspired me to create another conduit another layer of getting people 
uh, into employment. But but the people that we were looking at were these kind of square pegs trying to fit into a, a society which is predominantly round hole. Um, so we created the Woodmore Foundation, um, and in my early uh, in the early concept, we created a dozen completely different, very interesting, very unique challenges um, that we were going to run out. Um, consequently, sequentially throughout the UK, uh, around the year, um, to get different people from different parts of, of, the, of the world uh, and education and society into uh, a challenge that they could then uh, demonstrate their employability skills, their transferable skills, as has been mentioned earlier, uh, into, into employment. But the unique thing about the Woodmore Foundation, I suppose we have many unique things, but one of the most unique things, is that, um, is that all the evidence that is created from the students, from the scholars on any of our programmes, including the beekeeping programme, is all captured um, through user state, uh, user created evidence. So that so the Sophies and the Lilies and the Byrons, they and, and future students, they take their own evidence with their own smartphones um, and then they capture all of that. And what we do is we knit it all together by the end of the year to create what we now call their me movie. And the me movie is their uh, digital CV, it's their proof of concept. It's, um, it's unequivocally designed to, to demonstrate to somebody looking that they are definitely employable and they have all these amazing skills that can be transferable. And so when I created the, the beekeeping programme, which is the first programme in my mind um, from Woodmore, um, because I've been a beekeeper for over 11 years and I have about 30 hives, it was clear to me that that beekeeping can can actually um, convey around 50 transferable skills to employment. It, you just got to look at them and then understand them and then think, well, if you can do this as a beekeeper, you could probably do this as and then just fill in the gaps and name any other kind of employment. So that's kind of how we've got to this stage in, you know, in such a short amount of time. So that's Woodmore. We've been going for a couple of years now. We've got the beekeeping program running in two locations so far. Um, and we've got some other uh, programs running as well. So uh, next slide, please. So beekeeping program, we'll talk a little bit more about that. We also have another program which we're running. Uh, we, we piloted it last year, uh, sorry, this year, um, which is our Becoming an Explorer program. And there's more to, to, to find out um, on the website and you can get in touch if you're interested in that as well. Um, we, um, but we would, uh, we would like to focus on the beekeeping program at the moment. And the reason for that is timing. So the beekeeping program, the beekeeping season starts in April in earnest. Um, it goes in spring through to summer through to autumn and now it's all quiet they don't hibernate they, they're not sleeping they're just resting so now is the perfect time to have these conversations with the partners with potential partners to to get them ready and prepared for the spring break and for the spring launch uh, which is where we started RAF which is where we started Will um, so we're going to carry on talking about the beekeeping program uh, next slide please Okay, so why beekeeping? So uh, using the acronym of bees, why not? Uh, as you can see on the screen there, there, there's a ton of ton of evidence and a ton of good stuff that we can we can um, uh, we can showcase here. Um, uh, so I won't read them all out, but as you can see, the the mental health side of it um, is astronomical. You know, I, I run a full time company. I have around fifty staff. It's a full time job for me, but what I use my beekeeping as a form of men, um, meditation. So when I take my time away and I, I just get stuck into my bees and um, nothing else bothers me, my heart rate reduces, my stress anxiety levels reduce and being an employer uh, with a company that we have, um, which is very high end, uh, you know, sort of very dynamic, uh, it's quite a lot of stress. It gives me those few hours a week just to sort of switch off, relax and be at one with nature. Um, and they are incredibly lovely. So, so the mental health side of things is, 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 a, is a given. Clearly, there's a natural support um, uh, indication from, from the environment. Uh, we've all heard on, on things like sort of um, country file and stuff like that about margins in fields and, and, and growing the, um, the pollinator population. So, yes, they're, they're, that, they're, that's a clear one. From an employment point of view, yes, it, it, it just adds that other layer. In fact, when we created the Woodmore Foundation, I had this vision in my head of, of, of someone um, from a, maybe a marginalised uh, sector of society um, trying to convey what they can do um, and, I, and I wondered whether they could sort of get their smartphone and sort of hold it up and say look if you press that triangle there that that's what I've done that that's what I've achieved and it's a little movie all about me and what I've done in the last 12 months 
Um, but not just a, a you know a YouTube, not just a, an Instagram, but an actual movie created by a professional movie creator. Um, and that was why you know we, we wanted to add this layer into employment. And of course, society, it, uh, you know, Will and Raf could tell you to the cows come home that, that by, by going on this program, they, um, their students and scholars have met more people, engaged with more people, started talking about enterprise, got out and visited people to talk about margins and, and, and you know, and, and buying and selling and, and negotiating. And it's, it just brings people together. So, so the becoming a VP program was an obvious one for me. We do have another 11 other uh, programs which will be running in the future. But, but for now, um, yeah, it, we'd like to get some people more, more people interested in our Becoming a Beekeeper program. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this is, um, we, we've deliberately created a one slide uh, design um, to explain about the Becoming a, Pro a Beekeeper program. Uh, and this is it. So we, we, we do this so that we can send this out, we can, we can send it in any format. Um, and, um, and right at the bottom there, where it says click here, uh, which is what we'll show in a minute, you'll, you'll see our first ever proof of concept beekeeping me movie. Now we do have another me movie and that's through our becoming an explorer program and if you go on the website and you go to meet the participants you'll see that jill who is our becoming a, an explorer program she's got her me movie as well so in, in such a quite a short time we've already created two professionally created me movies which, which evidence everything they've done all the transferable skills um and it really is a very um uh, logical sensical practical um, program that, that is interesting as well. And when we talk to people, when we have these conversations of engagement and we mention this beekeeping program, it, you know, it picks their ears up and people start sort of talking and getting a real buzz for it. Um, and, and all the people we've engaged with so far ha have been just like that. So um, uh, the, the slide that you can see on the screen, we can send that to anyone on the call. Um, and there's more information on the website. But it shows very clearly how we take all those elements, we knit them together, and then we produce that me movie. And then, as as, as Raf very clearly said, the scholar becomes the you know the mentor. So it, it's a it's a cyclical program. There's only the bees move from spring to summer, from summer to spring, and then it goes on and on and on. But also. Byron now had to hand over to Lily and, and, and Sophie will have to hand over to the next person at Derwin. Um, and so it's, it's just it's just consistently evolving and growing and, uh, and, and, and having that nice connection as well, which is another thing that we, we tend not to have in society because everything's online and we're not talking to one another. So this brings people back. You know, and let's be clear, bees have been around since the dinosaur days. So beekeeping is an ancient art. It's not, it's not a black art. It's very teachable, as you can see. Um, but, it's, but it's a curious art and it's, uh, it's actually regarded as farming. Uh, so we're covered under all the, um, all the usual things with DEFRA and the National Farming Association, etc. Uh, next slide, please. So as a foundation, what do we do? Well, as it says on the slide there, we collaborate, we produce long programs, we, uh, we, we provide all the kits, we give expert advice from me and from others. Um, and, um, and at the end of it, um, there's, there's two qualifications. Now, Raf mentioned that he's very cleverly um, aligned um, the, the program to the DOE, the Duke of Edinburgh, which is a nationally, well, an internationally um, accredited and, and understood program. Um, but also there's an individual program, which is the BBKA, the British Beekeepers Association. And um, they produce nine modules in total, of uh, which you can go all the way through to become a master beekeeper. And there's not many master beekeepers in the world, actually. It's a very sought after um, qualification. But right at the beginning, right at the early stage of the journey, you can get your basic beekeeping association module. Um, and, and that's a, a, an in-person test with a BBKA on the site with the hives. Um, and, and if and there's not it's not um uh, that's if it's of interest there's no extra cost to the to the program or to the individual um but some people don't like tests and exams so we don't say it has to be like that but if they want it um the, the, you know the, they can be individually assessed by the british beekeepers association so they they have that national international recognized qualification which i think has been around since the 1800s um and then of course they can transfer it to something like the dv or, or you know or similar um other um you know universally recognized engagements um, so in order to, to us to get um, the program up and running, we established that very quickly that if we work with SEND colleges, agricultural colleges, particular environments, charities, then it would be a natural fit. Now, I've noticed on the chat that it's popped up around urban beekeeping and stuff. Yes, there are bees in, in, you know, in cities and towns. 
um, the, uh, we don't have the time on the call to, to talk specifically about it, but it can be done. In fact, the London beekeepers, um, they have hives on top of places like, you know, the palaces and the museums and, um, uh, you know, Fortnum and Mason and places like that. So you'll be surprised where hives are. Um, but there's also a lot of um, health and safety remits to, to consider and, and, and other matters. But if anyone is of interest um, who wants to talk, then uh, obviously Maria can, can forward any uh, more information around urban beekeeping. And uh, next slide, please. So as we're getting close now to the uh, finale, which is the me movie, um, we just want to convey, you know, sort of the other bits and pieces that the foundation uh, create. So we, we, we do run a, one, a monthly webinar um and and that's um that's if people want to join it it's, it's with me it's with maria they can ask any questions and they can ask any you know curious other pe interested people can join that webinar as well um we ensure that when uh, that when we engage with both uh, the colleges that we are engaged with we we shout about it from our point of view as well so we we create the social channels we push the marketing and the pr around it we also give supporting materials um, there's a, a we've created a me movie sort of timeline and so becoming a beekeeper timeline uh, that takes you all the way through the year and, and just because it's you know it's very busy with bees flying around between April and August it doesn't mean that August to April is quiet in fact there's, there's a ton of work to be done in the background um, and, and that's again there's another transferable evidential skill that if you don't prepare for the following spring then become the spring the bees won't stop now they won't hang around because you're not you're not ready for them so there's so it, it, it's a quiet time for beekeeping out in the field but actually in the background the support that we need to encourage the beekeepers to keep going with all their um, deadlines and their and their activities to get ready for the you know for the forthcoming season um and then as we say we, we provide monitoring um, and evaluation uh, we can cross-reference it onto into all the other evidential um uh, platforms as well and then of course there's the there's the me movie which i believe is, is is either the next slide or the slide after next slide please So it is the last slide. Uh, so this is just a couple of um, uh, 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 awards that Woodmore has won already in our in our infancy. Um, Woodmore is supported and seed funded at the moment by Millwood, which is my firm. And Millwood Servicing is a is a disability confident leader. Um, so we so because it's me in Woodmore and Millwood, you get that strong evidential support as being a DC leader, of which there aren't that many in the country. Um, and we were also very lucky uh, to, to win a couple of awards last year um, and this year uh, from the, from the um, organisations you can see on your screen. So in summary, before we run the movie, you can see that whilst we are a small and start and you know, relatively small startup organisation, we, uh, we've partnered with some amazing people, um, we've created some amazing programmes and, and already we've, we've got started getting proof of concept and success stories as well. Uh, and so I do believe that the next slide is that proof of concept and it should be the meme movie. Yes. <laughs> Hello, I'm Byron Turner, I'm 20 years, 20 years old. So you've been doing beekeeping with the Woodmore Foundation, is that right? Yeah. And what have you learned while you've been doing beekeeping? Learn how to do it nice and slowly, gently by the hives. Been looking out for the bee wing. We're making some food for the bees. Yep. We're boiling some hot boiled water on it, some sugar, and some syrup. No, just the water and the sugar. Yeah, sugar. I'm going to give it a big stir, aren't we? We are, because that's for the bees. Yep. So have a great day. We're going to go down to the, to the beehives, and we're going to take some frames out. We're going to put them into some container. When we get back, we're going to scrap it on the out. Okay, thanks. And respect the bee. I really enjoy making the honey with my teammates. Good. So, how did you make the honey? Well, we just cut it with some knife and put it into this honey skin thing. And it's spun around with honey. 
Oh wow, and what are you going to do with the honey now? We're going to sell it to staff to buy. So how hard would be you can go into Really cool. Garden. I'm training someone else how to do it. And she's never done it before. I'm, I'm demonstrating someone. If it goes faster, we hold it still. I was a fast spinner. I reckon you can you help me hold it still? Can you just pause it there, please, Rad? I've got another slide with this on. Oh, brilliant. Okay, cool. Thanks. So there's your okay, slide. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So just to convey um, uh, the last bit about the unique bit of, 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 the, of the me movie. So the measles uh, image you've got in front of you now, when we created Woodmore, we used a thing called um, uh, dispersonality referencing. So, that, so the, the Woodmore logo and the colors that we use and the discs on the, on the, on, on the dots on the me movie, um, they're all purposely created. So, um, so when we when we do this, you'll, you'll notice when you run the pro, when you run the me movie for yourselves, for example, that this stays on the screen for like sort of the last three or four or five seconds as a lasting image of all of the things that Byron has created. These aren't pre-populated. We put these in as the program develops and as the me movie works with us over the period of time, we, we, he, he, he asks for our input and then we sort of say, look, that particular thing that the person did there, that represents um, enterprise or, or, or um, responsibility or team leadership or, or whatever. So these are very, very unique. I mean, they're, they're totally bespoke. Um, and actually this is, you know, this is the image we always wanted to create when we, when we set out the foundation so that this thing becomes the Byron's, you know, lasting legacy of all of the things that he's achieved. And already you, you saw, you know, that with, um, with Lily, she was just, you know, she's already got stuck in literally, um, which is, which is just wonderful, wonderful. I have to say, I've watched that movie probably, I don't know, four or five dozen times and every single time I get a little tear in my eye because it's just such an emotional journey that we had with Byron as the first one. We didn't know whether it would work. We absolutely hoped it would. And, and uh, we are totally successful um, in creating that, but we are totally humble in the fact that uh, it all paid off and with the support from RAF uh, and everyone at the college and Trevor um, uh, and um, sorry, Jonathan um, and, and, and the team at, the, at their college, it, it, it became the success it was. So that's it from me. Um, I will now go back on to mute and hand back. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, there's only a couple more slides uh, to go through. One just is the thank you to all the partners, um, which is ourselves, Derwin Millwood, Simon the Beekeeper, um, which I think Matt has got, uh, you, not quite sure what's the term, the kind of, a, 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 Strong relationship with them, exclusive. That's the exclusivity. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exclusivity with with supplies, and also obviously based the British Association of Supportive Employment. Um, Matt and Millwood have sponsored. Matt's been a keynote speaker. I attend regularly, and base has been really keen to see what we do. And Maria and myself had a little marketplace stall at the most recent conference. So that's the big thank yous, and just finally. Um, if you want contacts, there's the Woodmore address, there's Matt and Maria, myself and Will about how it runs. And yeah, the QR code will take you to the Becoming a Beekeeper Facebook page. I'm sure we're sharing this all after the presentation. Um, but yeah, please have a look. There are quite a few more videos and also some more elements of the timeline of the Becoming a Beekeeper on Facebook. Right, that's all from me. Thank you very much to Matt and Maria and Will. Um, can I hand back over to you, Yola, for any questions? Thank you very much. That's such a good presentation. It's so interesting. Uh, thanks everyone for, for, for your contributions. Um, I saw that during the presentation, we had an interesting dialogue going on about urban beekeeping and health and safety assessments. So um, if any any other people uh, who have been listening have got questions, feel free to put your camera on and unmute and just ask them or put something in the chat. Now is your opportunity. Um, just to give you a little bit of a chance to, uh, to think about this. Thanks, Rebecca. 
Um, can I just ask about the making of the me movies? Is this quite a sort of uh, straightforward uh, procedure or is it something that's quite technically demanding? Because the quality of that online CV was was excellent and it's, it highlights, you know, what Byron had achieved in, in, a, in a very accessible way. Yeah, so I'll explain the end bit, and then maybe Raf, you want to spend the, the beginning bit. So, so we had to use a professional movie maker. Um, so this is something we found where we wanted to prov provide the output. Um, we searched around. Uh, it, it, actually, the one we've got now wasn't the first choice. Um, we, we did a trial run with another movie maker that didn't quite work out. Um, so this guy, that's what, that's what he does for a living. He, he makes movies and video content, uh, and that's how he earns his living. Uh, and we were exclusively partnered with, um, with Steve to, to do that. So his skill and, and years of professionalism is, is in the, cre is the knitting of that, bring it all together. Um, but I have to say, he can, only work, he, you know, he can only work with what he's got. It's like any tradesman, any craftsman. Um, and so it all comes down to the user-fed uh, evidence um, that the scholars and the students from at the moment Campbell and Derwin provide. Um, so, um, so in, in that respect, you've got sort of Will and, and Raph who are responsible for ensuring that regular daily content gets uploaded onto a secure platform. Um, and, and again, you know, it doesn't always work. Um, you know, maybe you have to do a couple of takes or, you know, turn the camera around or whatever. But again, that's just a learning journey. It's not as obvious, as easy as it is. We, you know, sometimes people aren't very good at it. So Steve provides that, um, that experience as well, that uh, education journey if need, if need be. Some people are very good at it. Um, so from our end, when we get all the stuff that goes up through the cloud and, and throughout the program, throughout the 12 months, Steve knits it together. And that's, I think that's like the fifth cut of, of Byron's, to be fair. You know, the final cut is, was, was the last one. And we have, we've had many versions of that. Um, and we tweaked it and tuned it. And it's been my, you know, everyone's involvement. So that's what happens at the end. Raf, do you want to sort of convey what happens at the beginning and how easy or hard it was with Byron? Um, yeah, it, it, it really, you know, smartphone, smartphone, iPad, um, camera, tripod, little fix onto a fence post. Um, it's simply just capturing. And to be honest, the best thing you can do is capture short, sharp, you know, 30 second bits and a few of them. Um, ironically, you'll go when you go on the Facebook page and have a look. Um, a recent one that I put six weeks ago is a six minute video and I couldn't stop it. And this was Lily. Uh, and it just showed the quality and I had to just run for six minutes and I put that on Facebook at six minutes knowing that not everybody will look through but hoping they will because of the quality but short sharp um, and you can you know I've done it with big beekeeping gloves on using my smartphone um, it works or slip your glove off or use smaller gloves set it up on a tripod to record and then just take the, what the, the beauty is you're not involved we're not involved in the editing um, and as a kind of hobbyist editor myself i know that you know a minute of video takes an hour to two hours to edit so the fact that this is something that woodmore provides is a, is a huge benefit can i also say that um when you start uploading videos so you'll be given um uh, an area in the cloud to upload your videos to um as you start uploading them um steve our videographer checks them and if it's if the sound's not quite right or you're doing something wrong consistently he will let me know and i will get in contact with you so we're guiding you all the way through um yeah thank you very much um, we've got a couple of questions in chat about timescale for setting up and also about costs. So who would like to? Yeah, well, I, I can jump up. Well, I can let Maria explain about the costs and the, and the, and the program around that. We have a couple of models in line. Um, so timescale. So now is exactly the right time. Uh, it's not a coincidence. It is exactly the right time to sign up and, and get interested and get the buzz because it takes uh, quite a few months to, to get everything organized, uh, get the kit um, from the supplier. Um, do the site visit. Yeah, Raf and, and, and Will will tell you both, you know, um, that we, we didn't we didn't just put a trust in them. I had to come to site. I had to check the APRI was lo the location was OK. And um, we had a couple of sites in, in question, actually, to be fair. Um, so there's a lot of onboarding beforehand. So now is a really, really good time. And it just gives everyone the time and the confidence to get ready for the spring. Now, with taking the bees from an established site, i.e. Camp Hill and or Durban, um, they've already got the bees sort of ready, starting up for the, for the new season. Um, 
So um, it could be as early as sort of March or April. Uh, it could be as late as May or June. Uh, the bees come out when they're ready. To be fair, they read the weather better than we can, um, and then and then it's you know it's full on. So there's plenty of time. There's lots of time to nurture, to contact, to communicate, um, and to have meetings if need be online or in person in order to to get the program running. But setting up is, is definitely this side of Christmas really. But as soon as we get into January, the months just whiz by, and all of a sudden we're in February. Now we're in March, and then boom. It's not. I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it, you know, it could start again in in late June, but, but as will will testify you get a late season and you get almost like a half a year um whereas raf was lucky enough um to, to have a full year uh, on, on year one and obviously the second year you start as soon as the bees are ready and um, so timing wise that that's where it's timing uh maria do you want to discuss through the different options of the, of the yeah sure model? the 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 thing as well about the sooner that you start the you may well then get two harvests so you'd be able to i think with raf they had a summer fair so they were able to sell honey immediately and then they've got the christmas um events that are going on as well so obviously that there's that um the other thing i'd just like to say is that to reiterate that nobody had any beekeeping experience bar trevor <laughs> obviously so we'll um raf myself uh, nobody uh, uh byron nobody had any beekeeping experience whatsoever apart from matt and trevor who was a specialist but um and it's been such a success so um and i still can't quite believe that nobody had any experience and it's done so well um in terms of costings we've got um several different options really and we will work with you to see how that best fits so we have an option where we can provide all the kit, kit up front um and then um, the college commits to giving us a percentage of the goods that they sell. Um, you then get the opportunity to sell on nukes. Um, you can um, get sponsorship for each face panel of each hive. So there's uh, like the four sides plus the roof. That's five sponsorship opportunities per um, for that. First. That's 15 different opportunities. And we usually say about £100 a side. From, and then that's, that's not um you know prohibitive for even small organizations so that's just to boost the income um, for yourselves and for us um and it's really for us it's about um just making sure it can happen um yeah, and we also are working with um some large corporations that hopefully will offer sponsorship to the program so um I don't know where all the colleges are based, but we would look at where you are and look at what's around you and then maybe target some um, large employers around that. So um, we don't want to kind of give a figure out there that's going to put everybody off because it's all about making it work somehow. And, and we're small enough to do that at the moment. And um, and I think that's one of our kind of uniquenesses, if that's a word. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay. So bespoke. Bespoke, that's yeah. the word, bespoke. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thanks very much, Maria. And um, has anyone else got any any further questions um, before we close the webinar? There's one thing that occurred to me, and this is probably more a question for you, Raf, is once a student or a scholar has finished their programme, how, uh, what kind of careers advice do you provide? Um, you mean when they've graduated from college? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was particularly thinking of Byron. You had that connection throughout with his previous employer. Yeah. So that I was interested, you know, what, what careers advice was involved? I mean, did he did he decide he wanted to go back there? He wanted to try new things? And what opportunities was he offered? Yeah, he wanted to remain with that employer. He did want to do the additional hours, which is something we're working on at the moment. Um, part of our employability and supported employment program at Campbell Wakefield is that we provide that ongoing advice and guidance when a student's left. And um, how long how long are you able to sustain that once from when they've left? Um, it's usually given to them, uh, you know, them and, or, and parents or carers. Um, and I'm not averse to somebody phoning up or getting in touch within, you know, years, years down the line. And I will always say that. Um, what is that? You know, we're not going to provide the the focused um, support because that's not. You know, we don't do follow on job coaching, but we can provide advice and guidance um, at kind of key stages. Someone phones up five years down the line and says, "I've just been made redundant. I'd like, how do I go about getting another job?" We can signpost them. The same will be done with Byron. Um, I will we'll, we'll work with his employer to see are they going to offer that additional day? Does he still want it? 
Um, what does his week look like? Does he want to look at um, voluntary opportunities that may even involve beekeeping? So some of the, the land-based um, adult um, social care activities in and around Wakefield. Um, I will certainly be inviting him back into college to come and A, see the bees, but also when we have those transition phases that we will be looking at the next scholar to start, you know, next spring or summer, we will have Lily to do a handover, but I'd like to have Byron back in. You know, he's going to form part of the alumni of the bee, becoming a beekeeper. Um, in terms of what we're doing with Lily at the moment, she's on our support employment pathway. She will go on external placements, but the beekeeping is going to continue through the year very much as her enterprise uh, module, but also part of that pre-employment pathway that when she comes to engaging with future potential employers, it is going to you know, utilise the beekeeping. Um, and she is very much a, a land based and an animal care based um, student. So the beekeeping fits in with that. Thanks very much, Raf. Thank you. OK, um, we're getting towards the end of our hour slot. We've got five minutes for anyone who's got any further questions. Ralph has very kindly put up email addresses, links to Facebook. So if you need, need to talk to Matt, Maria, Ralph or Will after this session, then that's how to get in touch with them. Um, any further questions before we finish or any further comments from our presenters before I close the session. I would just like to say thank you very much, um, Yola, and, and everyone on the call, really, uh, for taking the time to, to listen to what we've got to say. Um, uh, we are unique. This is very interesting, very, um, very different. Um, but, uh, it, it, you know, I, I think it's a really important time now more than anything. Oh, try this there. Um, now more than anything um, uh, uh, around these times, that, you know, these tricky times that we all seem to be in right now, to, th to think about a new route, a new way of doing things, something curious, something interesting, something something exciting um, uh, just to, to meet that challenge. And, and we fundamentally believe that this one particular um, challenge through Woodmore and all the others that we've got coming up in the years to come uh, will just be able to make that massive difference. And if we can get I don't know, 100, a couple of hundred people through the programme over the next five or 10 years, uh, and that grows and grows, then what, you know, what an amazing uh, change uh, that, that would be. You may have noticed on our first, our first version of our T-shirts, we we're only under the second design that Raph was sporting earlier. We, we came up with the concept of a change agent, and that was at the bottom of the T-shirt. And that was very much what we were trying to get across, is, is being brave enough to change that model, change that thinking, and just be sort of really excited around it. Um, so yeah, we welcome any any comms, any communications. Um, please do hop on the website and, and have a look. Um, and uh, Maria and I will do our very best to get back to you as quickly as possible with as much information as you need. And I have to say a big shout out to Trevor, uh, who's just joined us. Um, uh, Trevor, the uh, the silent uh, expert in the background there. Trevor is part of the Durban uh, setup, and um, and I've met Trevor. Mm -hmm. and as a fellow beekeeper uh, and he's he's taking on the, the students there under his wing very kindly uh, and uh, and making it happen over up in Shropshire as well so thank you very much hi Trevor nice to see you thank you so much I've had a request and um, to share the presentation Raf are you happy for me to send out a copy of the presentation to people or would you rather people get in touch with you directly or use the Facebook no, I'm, I'm happy with that, Matt. There's there's wood more content. Yeah, Matt's given the thumbs up. Yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. I can do that. So you've, you've got Certainly. that. It can be shared. Yeah, um, please get in touch. Ask those questions if you need. And to be honest, you know, if you're going to do it, get in a bee suit and go down. It's going to be one of the most exhilarating and calming at the same time experiences you can do. Mm. The first time I went down, I was, to be honest, petrified of the bees because I react really badly to stings, and I ended up disappearing. The second time I went down. I had the smoker, I got in with them, and it was incredible. It's, it's, it's a privilege and it's an honour to be able to handle bees and to work with them. But it just, it, like Matt said, mental health aside, but it goes beyond that. It's just, it's a very, very special experience. And to be able to empower and support young adults with learning disabilities to do that is just, it, it's the pinnacle of, of my role, really, sometimes. I'm going down every Monday in the morning, and I absolutely love it. So thank right. you all for listening. Thank you. Very inspiring. Thanks ever so much for coming and thanks very much for the presentation, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Thank you, thanks, team. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye-bye.